Prime Minister Andrew Holness on Saturday declared a state of emergency in the police division of St. Andrew South. Joining us to share his insights on the SOE is political commentator Richard Dickey Crawford. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to you. Smile Jamaica. Good morning. Good morning. 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 Uh, I, I would say over the weekend. <laughs> when, the Sunday morning. when did he call? When did he announce the SOE? I saw it first of all. I think it was days. announced on Sunday morning, yeah. okay. mm. which is interesting. <laughs> For Sunday, first time maybe. Yeah. And then Monday, another one was announced, was announced as well. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about okay. that. Um, a lot of people, first of all, are saying, with all that's happening in Clarendon, why does Clarendon keep missing the opportunity to have an SOE declared in that parish? Mm as opposed to other places in Jamaica? It's a very good question. And if you notice it, the character of the crime in Clarendon is, is really traumatic, is really mind-boggling. Yeah. Brazen. Uh, um, it, this is a place where people are killing members of their own family mm -hmm. for money or whatever it is, but usually I think it's money or, or some domestic dispute. Mm -hmm. So everybody must ask, how come Clarendon is so high profile and, and you're not declaring a state of emergency in Clarendon? I listened to the commissioner of police this morning, I think it was on RGR earlier, explaining or giving a response to that very question that you just asked. Mm -hmm. And sadly for me, the response was based on the fact that it probably does not fit the criteria the orthodox criteria that you might have to declare a state of emergency is not enough murders. Can you imagine that? Yes, it is on tape, so you can listen to that and, 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 and so forth and so on. The other problem that we face is that we, we tend to judge a particular area or issue or, or spate of crime based upon what it was in the previous quarter mm -hmm. or the same period last year and it has fallen by 2% now. So we feel justified that we don't need necessarily either to have to a state of emergency. It it exactly. Be. So what's the right way, Dickie? If, if you, I mean, usually that's how businesses operate too. They look at profit in Q1 prior year versus Q1 this year and use that as, you know, ways to tweak their strategy and grow the business or whatever it is. And Andrew South had 94 murders mm -hmm. from January 1 to June 29, up from 79 over last year. Um, do you think the SOE was justified? Well, nobody's, nobody's denying that. Okay. Yeah, right? Um, it's an awkward question you're asking. Do you feel the state of emergency is justified? The state of the country justifies certain steps to be taken. There's no denying that. I think we have handled the whole thing very badly. And certainly the discussion between the PNP and the GLP is a non-productive discussion. They don't seem as if they are willing to come out together to mobilize themselves together to fight the problem of crime. Mm -hmm. um, to tell me that all oh, politics is about winning elections, fine, we all know that. But, but there, there must be people around to vote. Yes, <laughs> but politics is about developing a country through a particular outlook and, and should, a program of be, work. Yeah. Should be. Should be. Um, so, so if you're saying this... Um, is justified and the island needs so it looked like we're looking towards a highland wide SOE. Okay. But do you know, I think if I'm not mistaken, you know, right now in St. James, Westmoreland and Hanover, there are SOEs down there. So we're talking about three on that side. Tripartite. And they say and that the results have been evident yeah. that the murders have fallen. Um, My challenge is because when we have <coughs> Montego Bay Mayor Homer Davis calling for another mm -hmm. I, I, I'm yeah. thinking what's the what's the long-term plan because the SOE to me mm -hmm. and I might be misled and misinformed seems to address a short-term issue um, it seems criminals may feel well this is happening now so let me pull back on the activity mm -hmm. that, that mm -hmm. I'm taking place but then when the SOE is lifted then they resume so what is the long-term plan to ensure I, that? I, I don't think we have our act together. We don't have a long-term plan. Right. And when we put in the state of emergency and the negatives come out of it, 
I'm not saying it is perfect. Um, and the, the argument that, oh, we, we, we must look at it from a certain point of view mm -hmm. and respect the human rights of people, of course you must. But the greatest human right in the world is the right, right to, life. to life. And you can't dissipate that argument, whatever you try. So we don't really have a long-term strategy. Mm -hmm. So what is the state of emergency then? It is a band-aid. It is a band-aid to stop the bleeding that is profuse in mm -hmm. a particular area. Yeah. How many times have you heard Peter Phillips and the Prime Minister and other Prime Ministers sometimes, oh, we have to get together at Vail Royal to discuss this issue. Mm -hmm. A telling thing was the other day, the Prime Minister went to meet with the head of the constabulary for, remember? Mm -hmm. And he said, some of you are keeping friends mm -hmm. yeah. with mm -hmm. criminals, yeah. with duns. And the dons get what they want from you. Well, he out said of it again you. on Sunday that there are some players in the force and in the um, political arena yeah. that are aiding and well, he didn't say aiding and abetting, but have associations Ties. that need to be and addressed. I suppose the prime minister is right. That's a correct statement. But the response that came from the floor from the police was, "And what about the politicians? You are also in the mix." Mm. A lot of finger pointing. Yeah, so I saw somebody tweet yesterday that as the state of emergency, mm -hmm. which ought to be implemented as an emergency measure, has now become the state of affairs. Permanency. So oh, yeah. it seems to have state lost of permanency. its right. Um, gosh, Dickie, so if this is a band-aid, what is the surgical procedure that heals this? What is, well, is a long-term fix? Okay, and the point that you make is true, you see, because when you put it on a state of emergency, like everything else in Jamaica, Listen, in this day and age, criminals are highly technologically advanced. Mm -hmm. They have information and they have the goods. And it's not like in the old days where you had to run from a police car. Mm -hmm. And um, we were just talking the other day where, for example, if the police come out on the road, even for a traffic stop, even to inspect vehicles, the minute one phone call goes, to the rest of the crowd. That's it, the police have nobody else coming through that corner. Mm -hmm. They're ahead of the game. And we're not up to, up, up to scratch. To be frank with you, Simone, the strategy is you have to clean out Jamaica. You have to clean out this country. How do you do that? That sounds like, how do you do that? You have to investigate. You have the files, you know. Have you ever listened to a public PAC discussion in parliament? All they're doing at the stage in Parliament is to... Collect <laughs> info. Is, is, ...is to tell you what has happened. The money's already gone, you know. They know who has the money. But they're, they're debating and beating about the breath what we're going to do. Nobody in Jamaica gets really, relatively... Nobody gets arrested. Nobody gets... Um, when I look at the five-point plan by the government, one of the major issues to, to stop crime was swift, clear proper justice. Where is that? Mm. I mean, people are waiting for years. You have to hide. You have to go into, you know, if, if you're, you don't even know if you're a witness, if you're protected. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, I was in Crossroads, right? And a group of guys across me. And, and I think this is a critical issue. The, the country's talking openly now. I said, Mr. Crawford, this thing can't work this way. You know? if, 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 if the government don't step up, and arrest all them people there. We don't need to call the names because everybody knows everybody and everybody knows what's happening in Jamaica now. You see, it's, it's, we're feeding, everything is feeding on each other. The rate of corruption is facilitating the crime. The crime and the corruption, the people go hand in hand and together. And we send a signal. And we send we a signal we that we can't manage or we don't want to manage. And, and that people don't have to be accountable. Mm -hmm. And when That's we send that signal political, at, at political a particular level, then, then it, it trickles down. Of course. How, how, how can you have people in a lockup in Jamaica and they are able to give instructions to their gang members okay. from inside the prison and you can't stop that? So it's political will Political and will without a doubt. Um, I, th I, I would hate to say it, but it seems as if sometimes the politicians tend to say, okay, you're the government, you face the fire, because I want to come in next. That's not the point anymore. This thing has gotten 
to the point where it's all of us or none of us. Well, if you don't out the fire, if you come you don't out the fire, what's going to happen? Still fire. Did mm -hmm. you still hear the press conference on, on Sunday morning? No, I didn't. The Prime Minister gave statistics of what's go, how we stack up to the world mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the region. We are three times... Three times, I want to say the regional average. The world average is like three per hundred thousand, four, three to six per hundred thousand. Regional average, some countries 14, 15, 16 per hundred thousand. Our rate of murder in this country is 42.7 per hundred thousand. We are worst than, than the region. We are, we are it's a safer nation to go to Afghanistan. at war. Are you, man? <laughs> or even almost I being could Jerusalem. Not believe. We are the yeah. best and the worst That's, of ourselves. That is, that but, is but the key. But what I don't understand as well, mm -hmm. Dickie, mm -hmm. sometimes when we go through budget and so on and this what's happening, and I raised this yesterday, we, I don't think we have enough resources. I don't think we have enough human resource in, in the police force. I don't think the police officers have all the equipment they need, all the forensic things that they need. So, so that's what's troubling for me in terms of a national will to fix it. Understand Because you, you, you can have a fire, mm -hmm. but if you don't have a fire truck, yeah. you're, you're just going to keep looking at yeah, fire. Government have an AK and you have a but based on what Simone is saying, you know, people outside know the truth about Jamaica. Right. And more importantly, they are willing to help us. Yeah. We have an open checkbook, let me call it that. We have an open assistance program for crime against crime from the USA okay the C, the the FBI established and increased their presence in Jamaica recently mm -hmm. they have said that tell us what you want or we are willing to help because everybody's locked into this thing and America is a <laughs> is, is, I wouldn't say a crime part, but a lot of our crime right. is associated because with America, trickles, obviously. That's right. where the guns coming from. Right. So, what, so what seems to be the issue with that? I don't know. I, I have to say it again. I don't know how serious we really are. And the problem I think that the political arena suffers from is the mixture the, 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 of who is a supporter of mine and who might be involved in crime and if I take a step against that person, I might lose that vote. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a complex situation it is. At the same time, there are those who have divorced themselves from the politics mm -hmm. and are out there just running from Negril to Moran Point, creating mayhem in Clarendon everywhere. Notice how mobile people are, you know. Yeah. You put the state of emergency over here and by right. tomorrow morning, Mm. You're going down to St. Elizabeth. St. Mm. Elizabeth of all places I where, you, where I know you sleep with your Mandeville. bedroom window oh, open. Mm. Yeah. Not you can't anywhere do that anymore. anymore. Not that's, anywhere that's, that's anymore. That's where it has reached. So yeah. I think in addition to that, um, you can't be stuck. The police cannot be stuck in any one location. A police station on the main street is almost futile. You need mobile that's my term. Mobile resources. police stations. We don't have the resources. But you can time. get it. And yeah. I tell you something. Find out, Point Dickie, because we have to yeah. get in the room. Well, if you don't find those resources, you're going to lose all your other resources. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it and, must be and, a good and investment. And the force right now, a lot of them facing burnout. <laughs> Poor we'll talk about that. Oh, my God. All right, my love. serious. Thank yeah. you very much, Dickie. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was a sobering discussion. <laughs> Political commentator Richard. Dickie Crawford, 42.7 per 100,000, yeah. or is it 47.2? Either way, it's way It's a lot. Too, it's too a much. lot.